Hey, so today I want to show you in this privacy deep video uh, the alternative front ends for popular big tech sites. Now I'm going to show you one for Reddit, one for Twitter, and one for YouTube. There are others, there is also one for Wikipedia, and there used to be one for Instagram, but uh, the Meta or Facebook decided to block all the API requests, so it's actually impossible to browse Instagram reliably outside Instagram. But what alternative frontends are, you can think of them as viewers of the content of the website, but not the official URL one, but uh, a custom user-built one using the API provided by the service. And in some cases, even scraping the original websites. So this is Reddit. Uh, I opened the privacy tools uh, subreddit. You can see the, the Google sign pop-up because in this browser I am logged into Google account, which I use for YouTube. So you can see this bloat and you can see uh, some other annoyances like the pop-up that tells you to go into the application instead of the, the browser version. And the initial load of the website costed me over 8 megabytes. And if I just refresh the page now, you can see it's in this video how much it would take. And I'm already using uBlock Origin. And all these requests are taking place here. Over 8, over, over 100 requests and 7 megabytes to load this subreddit. Not even finished yet, and still loading. Now, contrary to that, there is libreddit, which is libreddit.it, uh, and libreddit is an alternative front-end. You can get the code on GitHub and host it yourself. And if I reload this website of the same subreddit, I'm done in about uh, 16 requests and half a megabyte transferred. Third of a time loading and no JavaScript whatsoever executed or downloaded. You can get all the same information, all the same data as you do on Reddit, but the application itself, the alternative front-end, the libreddit itself, gets just the data and nothing else. No advertisement, no tracking, uh, nothing. Just uh, the content, which is the, the posts and, uh, you know, the upvote states and the amount of comments and the info in a sidebar. Uh, these are using native HTML elements to show the disappearing content. So actually, yeah, really no JavaScript execution here and you can use it as you would use uh, Reddit. Now, um, even as I showed you this, which is already a uh, much more pleasant experience to browse this, there is this big one private advantage, and that is that your computer, your browser, is not making a single request to the Reddit itself. All it goes through the libreddit instance, which is currently libreddit.it, but you can choose any other any other server that hosts libreddit uh, instance, and you request it from them, and they request it from reddit API. So reddit does not know about your uh, browsage of their content, because it's proxied through the libreddit hoster. Now, the same service uh, can be used for Twitter. This is a NASA Twitter Twitter account and again if I reload it I got so much JavaScript chunk from many different vendors uh, third-party trackers, cookies, pop-ups, annoyances uh, you know you can see 60 requests already and almost 5 megabyte transferred 
we are almost 20 seconds in and I don't see the content yet. I have never, I have not seen a single tweet yet. After all this time, okay. I got the sign up pop up. You might like pop up. Now Google sign up is crawling in. And we are <laughs> almost 150 requests. And instead of Twitter, you can use Knitter. Now, the official instance is knitter.net. Oh, I forgot to mention that on uh, on uh, Knitter and on uh, Libreddit and even on the YouTube alternative, you can use the URL as you are used to. You can just replace the top level domain here. So, as you can see, Reddit slash r slash privacy tools io the name of the subreddit here is absolutely the same and everything uh, after that so you can go to reddit uh, whatever link you have and just change th this main part of url and get the libreddit code it's made to follow the same url structure so we have uh, we have netter NASA page if I reload it again it works completely without JavaScript I am I am now yeah almost two megabytes but I've already seen the first tweets it's finished at six seconds no JavaScript just the media being the images and it's super fast I can scroll here without a problem all the videos are uh, click to play no autoplay happens uh, oh, sorry, this, yeah, okay, <laughs> this is GIF, so it it's not a video. And if you go to the official Twitter, scroll down, it's not even rendered on the page yet. It loads as you go with all this chunk, like topics you follow and stuff. So it's more private because you don't access the original website. It's proxy. It's more lightweight. It's faster. It doesn't use JavaScript. It saves your bandwidth and it's more customizable and you can host it yourself you can uh, actually yeah at, site li at sites like twitter you can even get rss feeds for individual profiles and here you can uh, toggle some some settings they, they got some themes you can use it to make it look like pleroma and hide many different stuff so it's actually more feature rich than the original Twitter and no one here asked me for the login. You don't need to log in to view any of this. So yeah, I've made it in a dark, dark scene. And for YouTube, as you can see here, I've loaded a Louis Rossman a channel through the search. And if I reload the page, Again, we can just test it here. The whole purpose of this video is to demonstrate how overbloated the original websites are and how lightweight uh, the alternative frontends are. Because now we're starting to see the, the videos here. And we've just downloaded 11 megabytes or over 70 requests. And instead of YouTube, you can use InVideos instance. Now, there used to be official invideos.io website. It's been taken down. This is uh, invideos.snobtheater.org, but you don't need to remember the instances I've showed you because if you go to if you go to invideos.io you can go to this button and it's going to show you a list of public instances and you can even use the Tor ones with the only only URL or you can host it yourself as you've seen here there is an there is a link to the installation and it's AGPL so nothing problematic here yeah so if I reload the Louis Rossman search result on NVIDIA's I got almost instant response and I actually see the grid of yeah here you can see the grid of four columns so you can see much more content instead of the YouTube 
there is just one at a time. And again, no JavaScript, no direct access to YouTube, no advertisements, meaning nowhere, not even before the video to skipping or not the ones that cannot be skipped, uh, nothing. If I click, yeah, and you can click it to view it here. The URL again matches the YouTube URL or you can click on the YouTube icon to go to YouTube and you can click on the audio mode and it's going to grab just the audio file from the video. So even if it looks like a video player, if, hey you, buddy, if you click it, just the audio, the audio file is being played. And behind every title there is this toggle icon that switches between the video mode and the audio mode. And the beautiful thing about this, uh, besides being super lightweight and just what you want, you know, no advertisement, no sign-ups, whatever, you can actually use it on your phone and close and shut down the display and it keeps playing. So you can use it to play music off YouTube. You can also download uh, either video or audio or audio in, in a, a proprietary or free format codex and you can also view comments from YouTube directly, the threads themselves and there are recommended videos just based on the what the API provides as a recommendation so it's not tied to you again and the, the nice thing about the in videos is that there are instances that allow you to create an account which is just an email address or I think not even email address just a nickname and a password and you can subscribe there yeah you can subscribe to channels there and when they make new videos you get this little you know bell icon like on YouTube but absolutely anonymous so you can uh, recreate your subscriptions on any in videos instances to get notified about new videos without compromising your privacy at all. And that gets me to the final point of this video, how to use it the most comfortable way. Well, you can you can make a bookmarks of, you know, in videos instance of an editor and of uh, libreddit. And you can also use the Firefox add-on called Privacy Re Redirect. You just install that from the official add-on website and you can toggle which, uh, which tools you want to automatically redirect. So if I choose Nitter in videos and Reddit, it's going to automatically convert any link I click to those freedom lightweight privacy respecting frontends, meaning that if I'm on Twitter, 